Hello and welcome. My name is Anna Markowitz and I am the creator of Digital Art Junkie. And if you're watching this video, it means you have just downloaded your portrait brushes for Procreate and you're probably wondering how to use them. So in this video, I'm going to break down each brush and I'm going to show you how I use them together to create portraits like this. So let's get into it. These brushes are split into six different categories. Drawing, color, texture, details, hair, and shading stamps. So the first category is the drawing category, and this is going to include your sketch brush and your outline brush. The sketch brush acts the same as a number two pencil. So press down hard, you'll get a dark line and use a light touch and you'll have a much lighter line on your screen. I use this brush to create the rough sketch, the initial sketch that's going to lay the foundation for the rest of my artwork. This is meant to be a really, really messy layer. The brush does not have any stabilization, which means that it's going to follow every single movement of your hand. So you can get really messy with it, use quick strokes, and lay the framework for the rest of your drawing. The outline brush is an ink-like brush that has a lot of stabilization to it. This means that it's going to give you a very clean and smooth finish. Like most of the brushes in this pack, the outline brush is pressure sensitive. This means a light touch is going to give you a really thin line, and as you press harder, it's going to gradually get thicker. I'll use the outline brush in two ways. The first is by tracing some of the major shapes that I find through my sketch layer. So in this case, it includes the outline of the face, the hands, and the headscarf. I'll then fill these shapes with color making sure that each shape is separated into a different layer. The second way that I use the outline brush is by creating just cleaner lines on top of that messy sketch layer. So I'll create a new layer above the sketch layer and just start tracing over some of those main guidelines that I want to follow through the rest of my painting, just creating a much cleaner guideline to follow. The next category we're going to break down is color. This is going to include your translucent color block brush, your blending one, and your blending two. The translucent color block brush is meant to help you fill in some of the major areas of color on your piece in a way that is really quick and really buildable. This brush is sensitive to pressure in two ways. The harder you press down, the more opaque the color will be and the thicker the line will be. When I say fill in major areas of color, I mean physically block out colors into shapes like this. Now your blending one and your blending two brushes are very similar. Both of these brushes have a pretty major halo around them. And how you wanna use them is by very gently running your brush in circles along the screen. If you press down too hard, you're gonna get something like this, which is not what you want. You wanna just very gently run your brush in circles until you have a clean blended look. I use the blending brush to soften up the lines that run between my major blocks of color like I have here. Simply select the color you want to use and then gently run your brush between the two. I'm constantly selecting the mid-tones, so I'll select the dark color, then the light color, and then the color that runs in between them until I have a blended look. After blending out those blocks of color, you should get a pretty airbrushed look like this. And this takes a minute, so don't get discouraged if yours doesn't look like this right away. Just keep working with it. So the texture category refers to the skin textures in the brush pack. The painted skin, the soft skin, medium skin, rough skin, and extra rough skin. The painted skin brush is going to give you a very illustrated look. It's meant to model a flat brush with wet acrylic paint. It's also pretty pressure sensitive, so a light touch will give you a more translucent look. Now the soft skin texture brush is my go-to skin brush. This brush is very buildable, which means that no matter what pressure you're using, you can still layer the brush on top of itself, and it's just gonna give you a very beautiful blended look while still offering some skin texture that can still look really realistic. Next is the medium skin texture brush. Now, this brush is very pressure sensitive. The harder you press down on it, the more you're gonna start to see that medium skin texture show through. 
Next is a rough texture brush, and it acts very similarly to the previous two brushes. It's buildable, the harder you press down, the more you'll see the texture, and it just gives off a really beautiful, more speckled look than the other ones. So you'll get a little bit more of different shades of color through this one. Finally, the extra rough skin texture. Now, this one is a crazy little texture. I reserve this one strictly for very dry areas of the skin, like under the eye, on the knuckles of the hand, etc. You'll get the best results from these brushes if you use them in the order that they are organized. I'm going to demonstrate right here how that works. So this circle right here represents a blended out portrait that you are currently working on. So that means that you have done your color block, you have blended out your brushes, and this is what you are left with, this little airbrushed look. What I will do is create a new layer above this one and select Clipping Mask. Now this is where I'm going to start to add the skin textures. So I'm going to select whatever skin texture I want, and I'm either going to choose a lighter or a darker color than whatever shade I'm working in. As you can see, we're already starting to get a very skin-like textured look. Now for the best results, you're going to want to combine multiple different skin brushes. When you have something you like, feel free to lower the opacity of your skin texture layer to create just a more blended and realistic look. Next is our details category, and we're going to start by taking a look at the blush brush. This brush works in a very similar way to the skin brushes. It's very buildable and you want to start with a gentle touch and then gradually add more. You can run your brush in circles and it's just going to give you a really beautiful pigmented flush to the skin. The harder you press down, the more opaque it's going to be. Here it is in action on the skin and I'm just very lightly running my brush on it and just paying attention to how it blends with the rest of the skin. Next is the Skin Highlight Brush. I use this brush for areas of highlight um, on rougher places of the skin, like above the cheekbone, under the eye, etc. It is very pressure sensitive, so the lighter you touch, the more translucent, and the harder you press down, the more opaque. I will strictly use this in light color. In my opinion, this brush works best with the light touch, so I'm going to select a light color and then find a point of highlight and just gently run my brush across the surface. Next is the Dotted Highlight Brush. This brush is going to create random little circles in varying sizes that are going to give you an almost sparkly, doughy look. So I really love to use this above the cheekbone and even on the tip of the nose, even on the lips if you're feeling up to it. And you definitely want to use a light color. So you can either start with white and lower the opacity or you can just run your brush very gently along the surface. The freckles brush works in almost the exact same way as the dotted highlight brush. You can run your pencil along the surface of the tablet and it'll create different dots in varying sizes. I find that these work best if you mess around with the opacity or the light settings. This is how they appear on a real portrait and I just absolutely love the mixture of the tiny freckles with some of the bigger sizes and I've achieved this look by just changing the size of the brush. Next is the eye glare brush, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It is for this little glare that goes above the eye. It's a pretty translucent brush that has a rough look to it. So you can build it on top of itself by gently running the brush until it gets darker, very gently, and you'll end up with this really realistic reflection. So the last of the details brushes is the clothing and fabric brush, and this is going to be your go-to for any items of clothing that are on your screen. It has a really beautiful grid-like texture that is similar to linen, and it's pretty translucent, so very pressure sensitive. A light touch will give you almost nothing, and the harder you press down will give you a more opaque look and greatly increase the size of the line. So now we move into the hair category. Now these brushes are also meant to be used together in the same way that some of the skin textures are. It'll look more realistic the more you use. So let's start off with the hair color fill brush. This brush is going to act as the base for the rest of your hair. 
So it's a very opaque brush, and as you put less pressure, the ends taper off into that textured hair stranded look. I find that this brush looks the best if you use heavy pressure towards the start and then lighten up the pressure towards the end. This is going to give the appearance of a darker zones towards the roots of the hair and lighter areas as you go down the legs. So from there you have three basic brushes to choose from, hair one, two, and three. So hair one has quite a bit more strands than the hair color fill, and the best way to use it is to lighten up the pressure as you get towards the end of your line, and this will allow the brush to taper off into a nice point. This brush looks best when it's layered on top of a color. Now for the hair two brush. This brush has a little bit thicker of an appearance than hair one, as you lighten up pressure on this brush, you're going to get a much smoother and clean tapered end. You almost want to flare your wrist a little bit towards the end. Now the Hair 3 brush has a lot more strands than Hair 1 and 2. While Hair 1 and 2 are good for individual curls or lines, Hair 3 is good for covering a large amount of area where you want textures. Next is the curly hair brush. So these are going to create some of those wild curls that you can either see on very curly hair or towards the root of the scalp if you want the hair to just look a little bit messy. Next is the hair strand brush. This is going to be your baby hair brush, your single wild strand in the wind across the face brush. These are just the tiny strands that are really going to pull together your realistic look. The harder you press down, the thicker the line. So you really, really want to barely be touching the screen as you get to the end so that you can end in a really tapered look. The lashes brush is going to work similar to that last brush. If you press down lighter, you can get that tapered end, and the harder you press down, the thicker the line will be. So this is an ideal brush for just short strokes. That is why it is perfect for the eyelashes. So you'll find more success using this for tinier hairs. So your brow brush is for individual eyebrow strands. So the way that this one works is it's very heavy towards the bottom and then tapers out. So this is great for those first few hairs towards the front of the eyebrow. And then as you get towards the end, you want to really, really lighten up the pressure of your brush. Alternatively, you can use the right eyebrow or left eyebrow brushes to do your brows with. These are complete eyebrow brushes that essentially just create all of the tiny hairs you need in one stroke. The harder you press down on these, the bigger the hairs are going to be. So I recommend pressing down hard at the front of the eyebrow and lightening up pressure as you get towards the end. I like to use the painted skin brush to create this rectangle under the eyebrow and then I layer the right or left eyebrow brushes on top of it. Finally, we have our shading stamps. These include three nostril shadings and one lip shading. The way this works is you wanna create a new layer and then use your shading stamp in the color of your choice. Then you can use your transform tool to change how it looks. You can click warp and move it around to fit the exact proportions of your portrait, and boom, you have a perfectly shaded nostril. The other stamps work the same way. Here I've used the color white on top of the lip, and now I'll demonstrate how to use the stamp on the nostril. Create a new layer, press for your stamp, and use your transform tool to rotate it the direction you need it, and make it the size you need. Then I like to mess with some of the lighting settings until I find one that blends it in with the rest of the skin. The last thing I'll talk to you about is the paper textures. With this pack, you received five paper textures and these are going to make all of the difference with your paintings. I'm gonna show you how I use them. The first thing you wanna do is go up to your settings and select insert a file. Then click on the paper of your choice and fit it to the screen. Make sure it covers every inch of your canvas. Make sure the paper layer is located as the very top layer. Then select N and play around with the light settings. I normally will use color burn, linear burn, multiply, or overlay. I recommend playing around with each one of these and seeing which works best for your drawing. You can also lower the opacity of these. So now let's take a look at what these different textures look like. Here we have the cardstock texture, the linen texture, the handmade Indian texture, which has these little specks that you can see throughout, the grid canvas texture, and lastly, the watercolor texture. 
Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for purchasing these brushes. I really hope you enjoy them. And if you have any questions along the way, please send me an email. I'd be happy to answer any of them.